Okay, so we left off with an inverted cone chisel, and now we're going to goof off and see what other types of chisels we can make, um, taking advantage of everything we've learned so far. So um, one thing we do when we're forging is we need to make eyeballs. So I'm going to swap out this um, data set for a sphere. So um, spheres don't have heights, so we're going to call sphere and uh, just have R1 and a face number. And we're going to see how that works. But first, we've got to name it. We'll call it inverted ball. Okay. So then we can take the same information and then call it inverted ball. And Comment that out. Oh, we have a major syntax error. Mm, it looks like I'm missing a single curly brace and we'll re-render. There we go. So for some reason, it doesn't like our ball. I think our ball is very small. But let's make it round first. Yep. So there's probably only one radius. There you go. So you'll find all sorts of subtle tricks where if you have R1 declared, um, <clears throat> the function may not work, and it's simple to figure out. Um, other things you can do if you decide that you want your cup chisel to have a thin lip, because in reality, if you're forging with this, this is just going to bend over immediately. You can actually modify it so that it's you know diameter over 2, but it's diameter minus 1 over 2. And... Um, all of a sudden you realize, oh, that didn't behave the way I thought. So let's take a look at what the sphere thinks it's doing right now. So when you look at the function, right, all of a sudden diameter is being subtracted from a half. So we're not actually shrinking down diameter. If we put parentheses around it, we get a totally different behavior. Um, and so this is when you realize that you want to pay attention to what you're doing in terms of design because uh, the basic math that we learned in elementary school starts to apply again in, in weird ways, right? So there's our beautiful uh, inverted ball chisel. And now um, we can do it all again with whatever it is we want. 